Hey guys, welcome back to the third instalment of this mini series I've been doing, building a Moses basket rocker. So I'll be running through finishing the joinery off and some of the shaping. So what I'm working on here is some tapered mortises. So this involves just taking a little bit off, e equally off each side to form a nice taper. So when I uh, put the wedge tenons in, there's a nice splay on the joint, as you can see with the lines marked out. So to do this, I cut a block at the angle that I wanted the taper to be at, and then I just uh, clamped it square to the mortise and then just used it as a guide um, to run the chisel down into the mortise and take the material off. So I got this done on all four of the upright posts. So this would make the joint uh, lock in, uh, really secure, very decorative as well. So you can see on this mortise the tapering present. So that will allow the wedges to splay the tenon uh, quite nicely as you knock the wedges in. That's all four done and uh, a nice gap on all of them. So after I'd done that, I needed to mark out all the rest of the mortises to get them cut out because uh, these would form the basis for the cross braces that connected both sides up. So I marked them all out took out some of the waste so it was nice and profiled and then just used the router to flush trim down and that just gave me a nice square clean cut all the way through once i'd finished uh, cutting the bulk of it out i then just used a little chisel to take off all the rounded corners so they're nice and sharp um, for when the cross braces went through them and then i lined them all up and extremely satisfying just to see that nice clean gap all the way through now i have all the mortises for the cross braces cut i then started cutting out all the tenons for the cross braces on the table saw and then finished them off with the router um, to get a perfect fit so I just crept up on the fit slowly by slowly um, with the method that i use at the minute for doing tenons Because the tenons were quite small, I couldn't use the router bit uh, to get right into the corners. So I just finished up with a chisel to get a nice crisp corner. So I finally got all the mortise and tenons cut. So what I'm going to do now before I get onto any of the shaping is get it all fit together. So it's a nice square block. You can see, make sure all the proportions are right um, before I then start shaping the rockers and then shaping the cross braces as well, just to give it a bit of elegance. So I've loaded up my tapering jig um, with the first piece. So that is the off cut. So there we have it, our first taper. And that is why I cut these after doing all the joints because that would have been really difficult to get an accurate joint once I'd cut that face. So since I've cut all the tapers on the uprights, I'm now going to cut out the profile of the rocker. 
or I'll stick it to each piece. I'll then router a profile onto this. Once I've routed a profile, I'll use a jigsaw just to cut the outside of the uh, router profile and then I will flush trim it on the um, larger router table. Um, so it will end up being a consistent both sides. So that was all the components, block shapes, and what I needed to do next was start doing all the roundovers just to soften the edges of the rocker up. So first up did all the rockers and then I started working on the framework just to get all the edges to flow into each other. So I assembled it. Once I'd done all the corners, I took it apart and then finished it off, being careful not to run over the corners that I'd done. So I've added all the curves, things shaped, not been sanded yet, but I just wanted to show you how cool this rock is. So before I got on to gluing up the main bit of the framework, I decided just to give it all a quick sanding, just to get rid of any imperfections from machining. So once I'd done an initial sand of the whole structure, I then was able to start working on the wedged mortise and tenons, and specifically the wedged part of the tenon. So what this involved is cutting two slots into the tenon. Um, I did cut these at an angle just to see if it would help with um, prevent any kind of splitting. Looking back, I don't think it would have made any difference cutting them at an angle or straight uh, because I added a relief hole at the end of each one. This kind of took care of um, the risk of it splitting or reduced the risk quite significantly. I then quickly added the holes for the raw bore mortise and tenons that would hold the removable cross braces in. I did this prior to glue up just for ease because once glued up, I wouldn't have got an accurate hole. So this is a little bit of a slow-mo of the uh, drill bit going through. Once I've got all the holes drilled, it was finally on to glue up time. So the first stage was adding glue to all the joints so I could get it loosely fit together. And then once I'd done that, I could start working on the uprights connected to the base. So I added a dowel pin, added a contrast wedge in it, and then I could start working on the, the wedged tenons on each side. So you'll get a close up view of me knocking them in. And by this point, the glue in the joint was nearly going off. So it was a bit of a race against time to get to this stage. So I repeated the process again for the other side. This time it was a bit more fluid because I'd had a practice go on the first side. So I didn't feel as stressed. It's still stressful, but it seemed to flow a bit better than the first time. So 
So you can see as I knock this one in, the gap either side starts to disappear and you get a really nice splay on that joint which just locks the joint in really nice and solid. So the wedges on these are oak and obviously the framework is ash so once these have had a treatment and finished off uh, there'll be a lovely contrast and you'll be able to see the wedges uh, popping through. There was one final thing to do before moving on to the steam bending and the curves and that was to tidy up these wedge tenons. So I just took the ends off and then trimmed the wedges flush against the protruding tenon.